looking at the reading five review questions, second Dante reading. Number one, what is Dante's point when he quotes the proverbial curse, may you have an equal in your home? I think this is a really interesting thing uh, to keep in mind as we move through the course, this, this saying, because um, what he's saying is that uh, it would be a curse in a household if everyone were equal and no one was in charge. No one was, let, let's say, the ruler or the superior authority in the household. Um, this is such a widespread idea. We certainly see it in Aristotle. Um, but it's this, this notion that someone must rule and someone must be ruled in order for things to work properly. Um, in order for a community to reach its purpose or goal, there has to be a ruling authority. Um, what you'll see in Aristotle, and you do see in Aristotle, and I think also in Dante, is that they'll often, often use the analogy of the human being itself, the human individual, and how we are made up of different parts, body and soul, or uh, reason and desires, or thinking and feeling, and that there's a ruling part of us. This is a very, very prominent idea in actually in Plato's Republic. You know, there, there's a part of the human being, which Plato identifies with reason, intellect, which is the part that is supposed to rule over the rest, and that no human being, Plato says, can really be happy unless their reason rules over the rest of them. That's what he considers to be the just person. He uses that as an analogy to uh, argue that the so-called best in a society, what he calls the guardian class, if you've ever looked at the Republic, uh, needs to rule over the rest of the city in his imaginary city. The Republic, you know, it's not a Republic actually, but his, his imaginary city in, in, in the Republic it was a very widespread idea, and I, I, I wanted to emphasize it, actually, in this first part of the course, just because when we get to reading more modern stuff, uh, liberalism, when we start reading Wollstonecraft and Du Bois and Marx, you know, it, it's to a certain extent they're fighting against this idea. You know, like when Wollstonecraft talks about the tyranny of men over women, what she is arguing against is this idea specifically this this idea that there has to be an authority within the household which is traditionally identified with the father the man so uh yeah i think that's a very important part of the reading number two is obviously open-ended but it is it says it is obvious that dante's central claim in this work is that there must be a single world ruler or world government. In this reading, what do you think his strongest reasons are in support of this claim? Obviously, it's open-ended, but you have to sort of look at the reading. And my thinking behind this was that Dante's idea that there must be a single world ruler or world government uh, not only sounds kind of wrong to us, but kind of crazy, I suppose. But as I was saying in the video on this section, um, you know, it, it's... It's at least a plausible idea, especially when we think of really the kind of problems, the global problems that humanity is faced with, most notably, uh, despite the, you know, the problem now of the coronavirus, the problem of global warming and environmental degradation, mm -hmm. which is not just pollution, right? We're talking about huge problems in terms of uh, global warming, uh, you know, the increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere has been happening for really decades, hundreds of years, but in the last decades, it's become prominent. We're talking about sea level rise. We're talking about changes in, you know, the food supply. We're talking about huge extinctions of animals. We're talking about threats to, you know, hundreds of millions of people who live in coastal cities. You know, trying to solve those problems without a global authority is going to be very difficult, which does not mean that necessarily mean we should have a global authority, because I think we can see the dangers of that. But, you know, it's a big problem not having, you know, the problem of coordinating things on a global level. Certainly, Dante did not really have anything like that in mind. 
But um, but what are his strongest reasons in support of this claim? Of course, uh, you can follow the basic logic of his thought. He's looking for the purpose of civilization, which he says is increase in intellectual understanding, intellectual growth. Um, this is only possible if we have peace. Peace is only possible if there's unity. Unity leads to the idea of one government, one political community uh, for all, for the, for the entire species. Uh, he also argues, interestingly enough, that um, the, this would be the most just form of government because if there were one world emperor, which sounds you know, really scary, actually, a world emperor, but if there were, were one king or one ruler over the entire globe, that person would be most incorruptible because there would be nothing more that they could possibly want right, in terms of power. Uh, so their desires or greed would not get in way of their, of their judgment, of their justice. He also argues that such a ruler would be most able to, to do justice because of unlimited power. Of course, he doesn't get, you know, the, the, the whole checks and balances thing, which is so rooted in, in, in the American political mind, uh, if you are American, you know what I mean. If you're not American, you probably know too. The whole idea of the constitutional checks and balances so that one person or one entity can't get total power uh, is really built into the notion of a republic, the Roman Republic, the American Republic, French Republic. You know, that, that you, you shouldn't concentrate power is a very in, ingrained idea, but it's not one that Dante shares. He thinks, well, <clears throat> if one person was in control and it was the right person, then. Uh, a lot of good could be done. And of course, what quote do you think best exemplifies that? You should continue doing that. It's an important thing to sort of think about. It's an important question always, you know, what, looking over this reading, which you should be doing carefully, right? What quote do you think is most important in terms of reflecting the overall message or point of view of the reading? It's a difficult question.